Hi guys and welcome back to Simply Forex, the channel dedicated to you, the trader. We want you to be successful in the markets. So guys, I'm going to give you some gold every day. I'm going to let you know which currency pairs I'm looking to trade and which direction. And I'm also going to let you know which news that you must be aware of. So let's take a look at the chart and what I'm potentially going to trade today. Top of the morning traders, it's Monday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Um, I got my hair cut. I look like I'm joining the army. That's why I dressed in green as well. Um, guys, yeah, I hope you had a great weekend. Today is Monday the 19th of September. Where does the time go? Um, as always, guys, we're gonna look back at Friday's trades. We're gonna look at today's potential trades. And we're gonna look at the important news for today as well um guys friday was a great profitable day so the trade should be interesting um and before i start please remember a couple of things so above my head guys we've got the live this wednesday morning every wednesday morning 6 30 london gmt so please join us for that get your questions ready um, and also there'll be a link where you can actually join the show and come on face to face don't be scared come on have a chat with me um, so that's Wednesday, guys. Yeah, and remember our Discord channel. So again, that's in the links below the video. Um, yeah, join the Discord channel. You can chat with all the traders from Simply Forex. All right, guys. So yeah, let's get on with it. So like I say, guys, Monday is 19th of September. We're going to look back at Friday's trades. Um, and we had some good trades, guys. So let's take a look at them. So the first one from Friday was this. It was the Aussie dollar against the Canadian dollar. Um, and we were trading it because of the following reasons. Remember, the day chart is your reason why. So I was seeing a head and shoulders pattern. Yeah. So we've got the shoulder, the head, the shoulder, and then price came down. So this is a shoulder... This is a head, and this is a shoulder. You can see why it's called head and shoulders pattern, although it looks nothing like my head. Um, and then we had, once price breaks here, yeah, then normally whatever this distance is, price can go a similar distance. Okay, so as you can see, the, um, the head and shoulders pattern hasn't quite fulfilled itself yet. All right. But let's zoom into the candles now to see what we were looking at. Okay. And then, yeah, once we had this candle form, yeah, at the start of the week, which broke this low and even these lows, price was clearly in a downtrend. We had lower highs, okay, and lower lows, okay. And then um, on Thursday, we had this candle form, guys. So the idea was just to follow this downward trend, also fulfilling the head and shoulders pattern, and then take price from our grey zone back down to this blue line, or even this blue line, guys. Okay? So as you can see, that didn't quite happen. We got this green candle form instead, but we were still able to make money on this pair. So, um, yeah, so let's have a look on the H1 to see how we did that. So if we drop down to the H1, so yeah, we had our grey zone, guys. And remember, I was quite strict. As soon as price broke this grey zone, we wasn't interested. But before that happened, guys, we got this candle. Okay, this candle formed uh, at our grey zone, and it could be a better entry candle, to be quite honest. But I did enter on this candle. Okay, but in hindsight, there's a couple of things I should have considered. Okay, but I entered on this on this candle. All right, but look, if we go to the H4, it wasn't until after I entered the trade that I noticed the H4. Yeah, bad trader. Yeah, I should be noticing these things before I enter the trade. But like I say, I want to be transparent with you. So look at this candle here. Let me get my pink pen working. Um, look at this candle here, guys. Yeah, this is this is what I was selling into. All right. So I wouldn't advise that. All right. So if we go back to the H1, yeah, 
that's what I was selling into that H4 candle. Okay, so once price come down, obviously my target was back down here. Okay, these last H1 lows, that's always the target, yeah. But once I started seeing these candles, guys, okay, and this goes down to reading candles. Read what the candles are telling you. So at this point, I've realized I'm shorting against that H4 candle, and I'm seeing two doji green candles. Okay, so I just closed the trade once I got one is to one. So I entered here. I didn't get any retrace. I entered here, put my stop here, and I got out about here. Okay, so once I got my risk to reward of one is to one, I was out of this trade. Okay, these candles tell me that. And even if they didn't, the next candle, yeah, this next green candle here. Yeah, that should be telling you get out of the trade, really. Okay, so it was a bad, good trade, if that makes sense. So I got out, I closed 80%, and then my 20% was taken out up here. Okay, my 20% was taken out with this candle. Okay, guys, so I'm going to say, I'm going to be totally transparent, say that was more of a fortunate uh, fortunate trade, more than a, uh, a good setup and a clean trade. Okay, so that's how I traded it, guys. Um, yeah, please let me know how you traded it. So I did make a profit, but then my 20% was taken out. Okay, once price come out, broke this, it's now using it as potential uh, resistance. Okay, um, yeah, and I'm not interested. As soon as that candle started breaking this, this grey zone, not interested, guys. But we managed to make a small profit. More fortuitous than anything. All right, so that was Aussie dollar, Canadian dollar. Um, just to point out these as well, guys. Once price got back up to here, yeah, these and this is obviously not an entry candle. This one, potentially this one, but then it's you know it's coming towards the end. It's almost a weekend. Yeah, close your trades. All right, guys. Aussie dollar, Canadian dollar. Next one was this. This was the euro against the Aussie dollar. And this is the day chart, guys. And we were looking to buy this pair. Okay, so let me zoom out just so you can see the fuller picture. So price was in a downtrend. Lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. Price come back up. Tested this last high here. Yeah. yeah these last highs here. But then when price broke this, we were then in an upward structure. Okay, so you can clearly see the day chart is in an upward trend, an upward structure. Okay, if we zoom in, so you can see the candle sticks a little bit better. And then we had this candle, yeah, very bullish candle with trend that broke this last candle high here and this one here as well. Okay, so everything about this trade told me that candle, this candle here, was a continuation of trend candle. Okay, so the idea was just to come from our grey zone up to this blue line here. All right, guys, and as you can see, that's not quite what happened. But again, we had we had a trade with this one, guys. So let's look at the H1. Let's go down to the H1 and see what how well see how we could trade this. Okay, so we had our two grey zones mapped out. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, and obviously this lower grey zone here was, yeah, not significant. It didn't enter this trade. Then, so this is a this is a exercise in money management and risk to reward. Yeah, okay. So as you can see, price come down into our grey zone. It wasn't until this candle that it told me that buyers were in control okay so this is our entry candle guys all right but from here to this last h1 high obviously there's no reward and that's always our first target so what you have to do you don't have much choice guys you have to wait for a retrace on this candle okay so i eventually got a retrace yeah literally down to the low of the next candle okay because then i could enter the trade only then did it make sense so i entered here i put my stop below here okay 
And then I closed back at these H1 highs at a risk to reward of just one is to one. All right, guys. So we had a good clear entry candle, but the risk to reward wasn't there. So sometimes you have to wait for this retrace on the next candle. Okay. And we got that retrace and then we could enter the trade back up to these last H1 highs. Okay. Close 80%. Yeah, I closed 80% here and I'm still in this trade for 20%. Okay. It did pop up, but it's come back down to our gray zone. So it'll be interesting to see what it does today. But I am still in this trade for 20%. Okay. So let's zoom in some more. All right. So this was our entry candle. Yeah. And again, like with the Aussie dollar, Canadian dollar, we were getting some candles here. Yeah. That didn't really fill me with confidence. But yeah, we still managed to get our risk to reward of one is to one. Okay. So closed 80%. I mean, we arguably had this candle as well. Could have entered on this candle. Yeah. But again, your your target cannot be the last H1 high. It has to be higher. All right, guys. So, yeah, reading candles was really important on, fr uh, on Friday with both of these pairs. And also on this pair, just your risk to reward. Sometimes you will need to wait for a retrace before you can enter it enter the market all right guys but yeah we made some profit made some profit on aussie dollar canadian dollar and euro aussie dollar um, let's take a look at today's trades now so friday guys we made a little bit of profit so i hope you followed some of the trade ideas and enjoyed the recap if you did then come join us at simply forex yes yeah? subscribe to the channel smash that notification button and smash the like button that will be much appreciated um also guys before we look at the trade ideas let me re let me remind you it's monday morning bear with me let me let me <laughs> still can't say it let me remind you of uh, our live stream on wednesday every wednesday live stream you can see it above my head guys prepare all your questions ask as many questions you like about trading or maybe a currency pair that you're in and come join us on wednesday you could even come on and join me face to face if you'd like to chat with me face to face don't be scared i don't bite uh, there'll be a link below the live stream on wednesday so you join that way um also discord channel guys yeah come on join the discord channel talk with uh, like-minded traders right trade ideas for monday the 19th of september so we've got three uh against trend trades not easy to say on a monday morning and then we have one usual trade trade idea that is with trend okay so i just want to show you the anti well this one technically isn't but i just want to show you three potential trades all right and then one one of our usual trades so the first one is this guys this is euro against the us dollar this is a trade idea this is okay so this one is not anti-trend this is actually with trend arguably yeah because when we had this candle here close yeah it's not an entry candle but once that candles closed we have broken all of these highs yeah broken this high this high this high so arguably euro us dollar is in an uptrend it's a bit of a stretch okay but then we've had nothing but bullish candles react at these this low remember this candle was the move that was the cpi yeah because of inflation is screwed all right but because we've got this candle here yeah i think we can at least come back up to this blue line here okay which corresponds with these last highs over here that i was talking about so i still think we have room to there we even potentially yeah price could carry on so maybe we could trail 20 percent. okay but yeah i'm willing to look for longs on euro us dollar it's a slightly aggressive trade um but it means we're getting in early for a potential change in trend okay so for those reasons that's the idea we do we are in an uptrend we've got this bullish candle okay and a conservative target 
Okay, but then we can trail the last 20%. Okay, so Euro US dollar long. If we look at the H1 guys, we've got a couple of grey zones mapped out. Okay, so our first grey zone is this, okay, which corresponds with these last H1 swing lows and also this uh, last high here. So what we want to see, guys, is a bullish candlestick pattern form. Enter the trade. We can take price back up to here. Yeah, close 80% of the trade and then trail 20%. I would potentially keep trailing this 20% past this blue line. Yeah, just keep moving your stop up, 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 below the last swing low. All right, because it could potentially be the start of a change in trend. Um, but yeah, that's the idea for Euro, US dollar, guys. Um, if that doesn't happen, price could come back down and test these lows. Yeah, these lows here. Again, that happens. We just want to see a bullish reaction get into uh, the trade. I would probably take price back up to here first, close 80% and then leave 20% to run. All right, guys. So Euro, US dollar. We're looking to long this pair. The next trade is this, guys. This is the Swiss franc against the Japanese yen. So let's start with the day chart. And for me, this is just an anti trend or against trend trade the yeah, euro us dollar you can argue was with trend but this one is definitely not with trend yeah this is clearly in an uptrend yeah warren buffett doesn't need to uh, tell you this yeah it's in an uptrend okay but like this yen pit like there is no ceiling to it but it has to start breaking down and i think it is breaking down a little bit okay and maybe it's this psychological level at 150 where we start seeing price break down okay so i'm willing to take shorts on this pair we had this candle yeah followed by this rejection wick and then we had this candle which broke the lows of this candle and this candle all right, so I'm looking for shorts for those reasons. If we go down to the H4 chart, guys, you will see how that, is, that day chart has just broke these lows. Okay, so these lows here, yeah, this candle broke these lows. And price on the day chart stayed broke, yeah? It didn't close back into this gray zone. So as you can see, H1 structure is in a downtrend all right so that gives me more confidence to take shorts as well if we go down to the h1 now guys because this is always our execution time frame so we've got a couple of gray zones so price could just retrace back up into here which corresponds with this low or even these lows all right and then we want to see a bearish reaction we enter the trade if we can close a risk to reward of one is to one at these last lows, great, we do it. Close 80% and even leave 20% to run. Okay, if that doesn't happen, guys. Price could come back up and come back all the way back up to these highs here and test these. But again, we want to see a bearish reaction. We get into the trade, take price back down to this gray zone is what I would do. Close 80% here. Yeah, and then leave 20% to run. All right, guys, so Swiss franc against Japanese yen. But bear in mind, this is against trend. This is, this is, I'm just showing you how we can trade against trend. All right, there are possibilities. Um, but normally, I would, I'd only trade with day trend. All right, so Swiss franc, Japanese yen, sure. The third uh, against trend trade okay an att um, is this this is the euro against the swiss franc all right so as you can see guys price was in a downtrend okay then it broke up breaking this high here then in an uptrend this last low didn't hold it was then in a downtrend okay and then as you can see back at these lows here price has reacted very strongly so the last two days yeah, Thursday and Friday of last week, we had a super bullish push away from this um, support. 
All right. So for those reasons, I'm willing to uh, look for a long on this pair. OK, um, again, because it's against trend, my targets are very um, conservative is the right word. Okay, so you can see my blue line here is my higher time frame target, although you could aim for these last highs over here. All right, but we can aim with that by trailing the stop again. All right, so yeah, longs on Euro Swiss franc. Let's look at the H1 for our execution. So we've got a couple of grey zones, guys. So again, price could come back into here. We see a bullish reaction. We can then enter the chart close 80 percent of the last h1 highs if we get a, at least the risk to reward of one is to one and then leave 20 percent to run okay but then remember we can just keep moving the stop up below the below the h1 swing lows trail that stop okay if that doesn't happen guys then price could come down into this gray zone okay which corresponds with these last lows here Okay. If that happens, great, we get excellent value for money, we enter the trade, we take price first of all, I would probably take price back up to this H, uh, back up to this grey zone, close 80% and then leave 20% to run, which I would trail the stop. All right, guys, so yeah, those three trends, maybe not the euro, US dollar, but these are anti-trend anti ideas, guys. Okay. Um, our, our true usual trade idea is this okay so we've got the fourth trade idea and this um yeah this is our usual trade guys with day trend okay so remember we did this on the analysis challenge guys there yeah, pound aussie dollar and most of us were trying to short this pair and we would have been right okay so and we're still going to short this pair today. So if we look at the weekly chart, this gives us another piece of confluence. All right. So. Yeah, we've got this weekly chart, which you can clearly see is in a downtrend, bit of ranging here, but then it breaks, comes back up to this last area here. Yeah. So what was once support then becomes resistance. OK, that is such a common pattern in the market. Okay. And as you can see, that weekly candles reacted at this zone to push lower. All right. So weekly chart says short it, short it, you crazy traders. And then we've got the day chart, which gives us a very bearish candle, daily candle. So we like this trade to short. Okay. Trade trend, trend is still downwards, lower lows, lower highs. Okay. We had a bit of a reaction here. Okay, and price has just been ranging, but this last high hasn't been taken out. Yeah, instead we've got this large whip close below it, and now we've seen this very large bearish red candle. So the idea is it's still quite conservative, but just to take it down to this blue line, okay, but currently speaking, we've still got 50 pips for that trade to move into. Okay, but remember, we can always let 20% run and trail the stop. All right, guys, so shorting pound Aussie dollar, and this is with trend. Yeah, that's very important. The anti-trend ones, you're, you're trading at your own risk, okay? But I still think they're potential trades. But remember, day trend is very important to me. Um, right, but let's pop down to the H1 chart. We're going to plot the grey zones together, guys, all right? So it's quite a scruffy chart really but what i am seeing is this last oh let me get my gray zones okay so i'm seeing this area here yeah okay so that's my first gray zone and then even potentially this area here okay so this first larger gray zone as you can see this corresponds with um these lows here, these lows here, and this H1 high here. Yeah, which also corresponds with these highs, this area here. Yeah, it's also historical um, area of supply, uh, supply and demand. Okay, and then we've also got this grey zone at the top here, which corresponds with these last swing highs, and also these highs over here. 
Okay, so that is why I'm plotting these grey zones here. Okay, if we then zoom in a little bit so we can see them a bit better. So all we're going to do, guys, is, yeah, you, you know the drill by now. Yeah, we want to see price come up into this grey zone. Yeah, uh, we then want to see a bearish reaction. You can then enter the trade, take price back down to this last low here. Yeah, close 80%. And then you could close 20% here. This is our higher time frame target. Or you could just trail the stop. Okay. So, yeah, that's the first grey zone. The second grey zone is up here. So, again, we want to see price come up to here. We want to see a bearish reaction. Enter the trade. I'll probably close 80% back here. Okay. And then let 20% to run. Trail your 20%. Why the hell not? All right, guys. So, pound Aussie dollar. Yeah, that's the only trade idea for today with the day trend. Okay. So, yeah, pound Aussie dollar short. All right, guys. So, they're the four trade ideas for today. Um, let's take a look at the news now. Guys, if you're enjoying this daily morning analysis, I hope you are, then please subscribe to the channel, smash the notification button, also smash that like button, guys. Yeah, much appreciated. Right, guys, so as you can see, news for Monday, the 19th of September. So obviously, paying pan our respects to the Queen, RIP, Your Majesty. Um, yeah, United Kingdom, not a bank holiday, and also Japan. So... The UK uh, Open, the London Open, is going to be very light in volume today, guys. Yeah, so must be aware of that. Um, as you can see, guys, there was a speaker overnight for New Zealand dollar, but that's all been and gone. If we carry on down, guys, as you can see, there's no other news to speak of as well. So, yeah, please bear in mind uh, that the London Open will be a little bit light today. Um, so, yeah, the volume won't be there. Um, all right, guys, but that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the vid. If you have, please subscribe, like, and share. I hope you have a wonderful trading day, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.